everyone a warm welcome to MLC TV News Hour. I am Sharifa Tununu Mohammed. The headlines. President Mohamed Buhari assures Nigeria on path to achieve multi-sectoral progress. Lai Mohammed persuades foreign investors to invest in Nigeria's new oil. Kogi government urges federal government to fast track dredging of River Nanja. And Malami denies link with suspects who raided justice or delays residence. Now the news in detail. President Mohamed Buhari has assured that Nigeria is on the right path to achieving multi-sectoral progress. The president gave the assurance in Paris at the Nigeria International Partnership Forum, a high-level event on the sidelines of the Paris Peace Forum. It was reported that the one-day event is organized to bring together the Nigerian and French governments and private sectors in wide-ranging discussions focused on security, regional stability, trade and industrialization. The event is also to attract investment to Nigeria, bridge existing infrastructure gaps, spotlight Nigeria's immense trade and investment opportunities, and reset false and distorted narratives about the country. The president said his administration had revitalized the economy by increasing investments in capacity building, health infrastructure, women's empowerment, climate change, and food security. He said the administration had incorporated the public-private partnership model into the economic recovery plan to attract private sector participation in the financing and operation of critical economy and social infrastructure. He said the measure was already helping to mitigate COVID-19 triggered capital flights and decline in grants and development financing. Buhari said his government was executing massive infrastructure expansion program in various sectors since the beginning of this administration to uplift living standard of Nigerians. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has called on investors from France and across the globe to invest in the nation's new oil. The minister who made the call at the Nigerian International Partnership Forum in France described the nation's entertainment sector and TV market as the Nigerian's new oil with 24 million TV households and the largest in Africa. It was reported that the event attended by President Mohamed Buhari and business moguls from Nigeria and France was organized to spotlight Nigeria's image trade and investment opportunities. Mohamed said Nigeria is the African music and entertainment capital and has the continent's largest TV market with high growth potential. He said with the ongoing digital switchover, there were potential for investment in the manufacturing of set-top boxes, concept provision and requisite technology. Mohammed said beside the TV market, Nigeria has African largest internet and social media economy with 33 million active social media users and annual ad spend of about 233 million US dollars. He said Nigeria is projected to be the fastest growing media and entertainment market in five years time with 12.1 compound annual growth rates. According to him, the market growth is currently driven by subscription revenue, which accounted for 72.26%, while TV advertising accounted for 21.3%. Mohammed described Nollywood and Nigeria music industry as the pride of the continent. According to him, Nollywood is the second largest TV in the world, creating about 2,000 movies annually, while music industry alone in 2020 generated 7.7 .7 billion US dollars. The minister reiterated that the Nigeria economy is prepared and waiting for investors and the global investors should take the advantage of the creative and TV sectors. Federal government has been called upon to fast track the dredging of River Nanja towards bringing a lasting solution to the challenge of annual flood. Governor Yahya Bello, who made a call in a message during a one-day stakeholders meeting on the activities of Hydroelectrical Power Producing Area Development Commission at the government house Lokoja, called on the federal government to expedite action on the establishment of seaports in the state capital. The governor, who was represented by the deputy governor, Edward Onoja, said the dredging of River Nanja will create economic visibility of the rivers through transportation and job opportunities. Governor Bello expressed appreciation to President Muhammad Buhari for the establishment of the commission aimed at resolving ecological and flooding challenges in six states of the country. According to him, the state government will continue to partner with the commission to provide relief materials to flood victims in some local government areas of the state. The managing director of the commission, Abubakar Sadiq Kielwa, said the commission have gone around the state, especially local governments affected by the last flood, and assured that ecological challenges in local government areas will be resolved soon. He said plans are also on to provide assistance to people with special needs and commended Governor Yabelo for his support to HYPPADEC. All is now set for the Congresses of the African Democratic Congress of the world's local government areas of Gogi State.
The party in a statement made available to newsmen on Thursday in Lokoja, the state capital, explained that the Congress at the world level holds on Saturday, November 13, 2021, at 10 a.m. prompt. The statement reads, This is to inform the general public, especially leaders and teaming supporters of our great party, African Democratic Congress, ADC, that the Congress is to elect new executive of our party at the world, local government areas and state level comes up as follows. World's Congress, Saturday, November 13, 2021. Local Government Congress, Wednesday, November 17, 2021. And State Congress, Friday, November 19, 2021. The exercise will commence at 10 a.m. prompt on each day at the respective centers across the state as all eligible delegates are therefore enjoined to be punctual and maintain orderliness during the exercise. New members are also welcome to African Democratic Congress as our party is ready to provide the dividends of democracy that our people are yearning for. Omar Jubri Lugwandu said, The attention of the Office of the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice has been drawn to a confession of a suspect during interrogation in the investigation of the recent invasion of the residents of the highly respected Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Mary Peter Odili. Gwandu said, With all the competent high-level professionals and capable human resources available at the disposal of the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, it only takes the imagination of the evil mind to assume or think that the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice will descend so low to engage in a quack or fake police officer to serve as his consultant. This is a case of a drowning man scavenging for a dying partner. They are happy to note that investigation has commenced to unravel the circumstances and personalities behind the invasion and sponsored campaign of calumny against the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. It is their desire and hope that the investigation will also disclose those after the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. Those dragging his personality, his name and his exalted office in the dirty politics of disrepute. This is an orchestrated attempt to stir unnecessary controversies and public apprehension. Gwando asked the suspect to present documents of engagement where he worked as a consultant to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. Whether in past or now, he also said they boldly and unequivocally challenged the fake consultant police officer to come out with answers or responses to this question to the general public. The Honorable Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice superintends over and respect the rule of law, who will not do anything to undermine the sanctity of his office and that entire judiciary and justice sector. Kogi State Chapter of the Female Lawyers FIDA has promised to continue to work harmoniously within our world to protect and promote the rights of women in society. The FIDA State Chairperson, Ajuma Lilian Okolo, made the promise after a novelty match with NAWAJ organized as part of their lineup programs to mark FIDA Week. The two bodies have jointly embraced one another to pursue the cause of promoting gender equality in the state. Fed Gafar has more. This sport of soccer is the most popular in Nigeria in terms of how it is played and how it unites and inspires the people. For once, the game is played in two 45-minute halves for a total of 90 minutes of game time. But the novelty match between the female lawyers and journalists, both of each have their executives and members participated in Kogi State, spent only 20 minutes to play soccer. The players, which number 1 to 10 from each team, spend the playing time of the game running back and forth on the field after the ball. And any player can score a goal at any time by kicking the ball into the opposing team's goal. This makes soccer an exciting, fast space game where positions of the ball changes hands many times and a goal can happen suddenly and unexpectedly. That was what both teams experienced beyond playing Khan's penalty, which gave the feeder an edge above the Nawaj. The feeder scores and then the message is passed that connotes the saying that no victor, no vanquish as teams, members embrace one another. That is the spirit of unity and synergy. Feeder and Nawaj called for admonishing one another in love by saying no to violation of rights and hate speech.
continue our synergy with Nawaj. We have a very robust relationship with them and we intend to keep it going. The fun we derived from it was actually much. It is today we know um, how hard it is to play a football match. But in all, we are happy. We have been able to um, create a relationship between us, Nawaj, and FIDA. And the relationship will continue to blossom. Some team members used the opportunity to call on both young and old to spend quality time exercising their body. Uh, the game is all about meeting up with people, women. We shouldn't just leave ourselves because we are women. We should always come out, try to be fit, play football, do other recreational activities and then just be fit. Educating as well. At least now I know there are a lot of things that happens on the field, not just people running around chasing the ball. You need to do some kind of um, calculating while you are chasing the ball and be active, you know, paying attention to every detail and everything happening around you. It's good to exercise our body. As a woman, don't just say, I used to trek, I used to go places. No. Exercising the body is different from trekking or doing house choice. But you go on the field, enter the field, jog around, run so that you can be strong. We have this consistent relationship with FIDA that we know we will continue to build on. And as Nawajan, we are with FIDA to, to complement their job. As they are doing the job, we are here to report what is happening. And that's how our relationship will continue to be stronger. It is good to exercise oneself each day. At least once in a week, go for exercise. It's very good for your body. They added that making the choice to play a game of soccer has many benefits, physical, mental, emotional, and social. That is the spirit on this field. And in your day-to-day -day life, whether you are unfamiliar with the sport or you are a fan looking to get into it, use it to exercise your body to remain healthy. Fit Abdugafa reporting for MNC TV. Lucky Benedium, a former governor of Edo State, has been arrested and detained by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission. Authoritative reports now have it that Ibenidium, who finished his tenure as governor in 2007, is being questioned at the Abuja headquarters of the FCC for allegedly diverting public funds to the tune of 1.6 billion naira. A loan obtained by the Edo State government is said to have been diverted to a company which he has interest in. The latest invitation was confirmed by the spokesman of the AFCC, Wilson Woodjarin, who failed to give more details. Lucky Nosa Karen Ibinidion was elected governor of Edo State in April 1999, an office he had from 29 May 1999 to 29 May 2007. During the period of his governorship, he established the Edo State Polytechnic, Usen, and was elected by his colleagues as chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum. Two fraudsters are specialized in defrauding job seekers of huge sum of money under the guise of providing non-existing employment have been arrested by the Kassina State Police Command. The suspected fraudsters Ibrahim Bello alias Ibrahim Salawa Quarters and Ibrahim Abdullahi alias Babairo of Oguara Yara Quarters in Kassina Metropolis were nabbed by police operatives parading the suspect before journalists. The State Police Public Relations Officer Gambo said the duo duped one Khadija Adamu and collected a sum of 12.9 million naira. In the course of investigation, he said fake employment letters and various letter-headed papers belonging to the agency and many government and corporate organizations were recovered from them. Issa, a superintendent of police, said on 1st 11, 2021, the command succeeded in busting a syndicate of fraudsters that specialized in defrauding unsuspecting members of the public through the sale of fake employment and appointment letters and plots of land. They convinced their victim that they are very important personalities in Abuja who supply job employment offers of paramilitary and other government ministries such as Nigeria Immigration Service, Federal Inland Revenue Services, Department of Petroleum and ECOWAS. You are still watching MLC TV News. More stories to come after the break. Do stay with us. Malachi TV Online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV. With entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. 
MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. Now to our following news. The COP26 climate summit in Glasgow is entering its final day. Amid growing fears that the goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 Celsius is unlikely to be met, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres bluntly told the Associated Press News Agency that the goal was on life support. He said the summit will probably not see governments make the pledges needed to cut CO2 emissions by enough. Earlier, COP26 President Alok Sharma warned that time was running out to close a deal before the summit ended. Scientists say limiting global temperature rises to 1.5 Celsius will help humanity avoid the worst climate impact. This is compared with pre-industrial temperatures. At Paris in 2015, world leaders pledged to try to keep the world from warming by more than between 1.5 Celsius to 2 Celsius through sweeping greenhouse gas emission cuts. Latest projections are for a rise of 2.7 Celsius. Guterres warned that promises to reduce emissions were meaningless while governments continue to invest in fossil fuels. He called the announcement made so far in Glasgow far from enough, adding they know what must be done. Meanwhile, Sharma called on negotiators to find solutions to difficult issues before the official closing of the summit scheduled for 1800 GMT. Fenster was found guilty of breaching immigration law, unlawful association, and encouraging dissent against the military. He was earlier this week slapped with two additional charges of sedition and terrorism, which carry a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. A verdict on the new charges has not yet been given. First, who is 37 years old, was the managing editor of online site Frontier and Yama, was detained at Yango International Airport in May. He is one of dozens of local journalists that have been detained since the military coup in February, according to Frontier. First, I had earlier worked for Yama Now, an independent news site that has been critical of the military. And on sports today, Aminata Diallo, Paris Saint-Germain midfielder, released by police without charge. Paris Saint-Germain women's midfielder Aminita Diallo has been released without charge by French police investigating an attack on her teammate Kara Hemoy. Diallo had been arrested on Wednesday. Diallo, who is 26, was driving Hemoy and another unnamed teammate home after a team meal in Paris on 4th November when they were ambushed by two masked men. A 34 year old man who had been arrested in connection with the attack has also been released by police. When the attack took place, Diallo's fellow fans, International Hamroy, was dragged from the car and had her legs beaten. Hamroy, who is 31, was treated in hospital and had stitches on her arms and legs. In a statement released on Wednesday following Diallo's arrest, PSG said they were working on police to shed light on the facts while strongly condemning the violence committed. The club also added they had taken all necessary measures to guarantee the health, well-being and safety of the players since the attack took place. Diallo, who has been capped seven times by France, joined PSG in 2016 and has made more than 60 appearances for the club, but spent time on loan at Atletico Madrid last season. Ponchatuala native Julia Wellings Hurricane Hawkins will make history Saturday when she competes at age 105 in the 100-meter race at this year's Louisiana Senior Games. Now a resident of Baton Rouge, she will travel back to Tangi Pahoa Parish to participate in this year's game at Southeastern Louisiana University Track Complex in Hammond. The games, which are free and open to the public, will begin at 8 a.m. Saturday. The 100-meter race are scheduled for 11.10 a.m. Hawkins have moved to a brand new age category for women's 100 meter, said Del Moon, media director of the National Senior Games Association. Moon said she will be the first American and first woman to compete at age 105. Previously, only a Japanese short putter and a Polish discus thrower and runner have competed at this age level. Once Hawkins starts, she does not stop, nor does she walk, Moon said. She gets into pace and goes. Master records are organized in five years division. Hawkins previously competed in the 100 to 104 age bracket. She set two world records in 2017 when she ran the 50 meter race in 1831 seconds and the 100 meter race in 3962 seconds. Her goal is to finish this year 100 meter in order a minute, and Moon said that is a very attainable goal for her. And she's off at 105 years old, in a class all by herself, and with a fresh picked flower in her hair. 
Julia Hawkins was running for the record books at the Louisiana Senior Olympic Games. Come on, Julia, you got it, you got it. Come on. She is running 100 meters, a little bit more than a football field, and has to stay in that lane, despite not being able to see much more than about a foot in front of her because of her age. Miss Hawkins stays in race shape, mostly by jogging a mile or two a day near her Baton Rouge home that she and her husband built together back in 1948. And that's where we first met her, the day before the race. Well, hello, Miss Julia. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm David. Well, David, we've been waiting a long time on you. Well, <laughs> have you ever wanted to be a world record holder? Not particularly. No. Are you impressed by it? No. Not particularly. I do many other wonderful things before this. This is just a drop in the bucket. She grew up in the 1920s when a train ticket cost about a nickel. What was the state of the world when you were born? Much calmer, fewer buttons to push, <laughs> and, uh, but lots of books to read. She became a teacher and fell in love with gardening. She shared that love for nature with a fellow student at LSU named Murray Free Hawkins Jr., or Buddy as they called him. I met him the first day at LSU. I went home and wrote about him in my diary. He was so smart, and so clever, and so fun. He had a good sense of humor, and he was vivacious and wonderful. We were married by telephone. By telephone? At that time, Murray was at Pearl Harbor, serving in World War II. Together, they raised four children, and after 70 years of marriage, Murray died at the age of 95. Did you want to live to be this old? I couldn't imagine being this old. Without him, it's not the same. It's not quite as wonderful. What are your dreams? I don't have a dream. I just want to go to sleep and let it end. <laughs> That's what my husband did. We were sleeping together, and you sang love songs to me that night. Wonderful songs. So that's a wonderful way to go. Well, until that happens, we are going to cheer you on. Thank you. Which takes us right back to that 100-meter run. On race day, among those cheering her on were two of her former students, 90-year-old Rosemary and Evelyn, who's 89. She finished in just under one minute, three seconds, setting a world record as the oldest American and the first woman to run 100 meters in her age group. I'm so happy. Now, you know, every winner deserves a press conference, and this one set her own rules. Okay, one question apiece. You want to do it again? Yeah. Right now? <laughs> no. How about in 106? Do it again? Maybe so. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> See how I feel when I get up in the morning. <laughs> Deal. to Matthias IADG for entertainment news. Marvel's highly anticipated film Eternal is finally premiering in Nigerian cinemas. This exciting news comes a week after the film was yanked from cinema schedules on November 4th, same date as its global release. Record that the film raised eyebrows for its controversial kissing scene involving two gay characters. Hence, its temporary suspension ordered by the National Film and Video Censors Board. While the Censors Board never confirmed or denied the report, Film One Entertainment released a statement promising that the team was working hard to bring back Itana back to cinemas following its temporary suspension. The distribution company shared another statement on Thursday, November 11, confirming that the film will premiere on November 12. Promise delivered. We are happy to announce that from tomorrow, Itanas will be shown in cinemas nationwide, Film One shared on Instagram. It is unclear if Disney succumbed to pressure and edited the controversial scene as the production giant originally refused to budge on its stance. The Chloe Zhao directed film has since been hailed as Marvel's first inclusive superhero film with gay superheroes. The film was also banned in countries across Gulf region like Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait for its controversial scene.
Dolan Entertainment News from Africa, Nigerian music stars Rema and Ira Star have both been nominated for the 2021 edition of the Mobile Awards. The singers will be slugging it out with other African arts for the Best African Music Arts Awards. Announcing their nomination, the founder of Mavis Record, Don Jazzy, expressed gratitude to the organizers for recognizing his signees. Ira Star and Rema has been nominated for the 2021 Mobile Award. Crazy. It's been under a year since we activated Ira Star and less than three years for Rema. This is phenomenal. A big shout out to them for their talent and hard work and to the whole Maven team for being such a brilliant family, he wrote. To the Mobile Awards, it's been 24 years of celebrating black music excellence. Thank you for always supporting and amplifying black voices across the world. Congratulations to all other nominees as well and good luck at the awards. Looking forward to the future we are all building together. Rema was nominated for the Best International Art alongside Wizkid, Kanye West, Drake and Lil Nas X. Other African arts for the best African music arts include David Doe, Whiskey, Tira Savage, and Bonaboy. King Promise, Tem, CK, and SAG were also nominated for the awards. And that is all on entertainment news today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Back to our caster for more stories. Thank you, Matthias, for the update. Vanguard missing reporter Todo Henry Salem has been found dead in Abuja. Details of the circumstances surrounding the recovery of his remains were still sketched. Late Salem, who was covering the House of Representatives, was last seen on October 13, 2021. After the close of work that day, he was said to have alighted from a cab at Total Filling Station, close to the first headquarters, and headed for Big J's Garden in the company of a female relative. Thereafter, he reportedly flagged a cab for the lady who left before him, informing her that he was going to Area 8 Garki, but he was never seen until his remains were recovered on Thursday. An alarm on his mysterious disappearance was raised the next day, from where the matter was directed to the intelligence response team, IRT, on October 16, 2021. And that's today's news package. Join us tomorrow via the same channel. For sponsorship and advert placement, call the numbers displayed on your screen. Or visit our social media handles, Facebook at MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021, YouTube Malachi TV. I am Sharifa Tonino Mohammed. Thanks for staying with us. <music>